So, what I actually didn't have any any real agenda to really talk about. I just uh, wanted to see what the day will evolve into and, and see what I can we can come to some kind of conclusions. Well, the the topic of the talk should be like open to see. Uh, 2015. Well, but in fact, actually, it doesn't have maybe much to do with OpenSC as a project, but more about the whole ecosystem, the how how the things could look like in 2015, or you know, is the future bright or is the future dark? Well, the the, the title page is black like funerals, but actually, it's not that bad. So before trying to make any kind of plans or predictions uh, for the you know, next five years, I come from Estonia, it used to be a Soviet country, they used to love the five-year plans. Uh, we'll just take a look back when I, when I started to work with OpenSC, it was 2004 or five or something like that. And you know, just to see what has happened during the past five years to maybe see some hints or insight into the future things that might happen. So, just did a code checkout to see how the code looked back in 2005. And at the end of 2005, not in the beginning, unfortunately, there were 17 different card drivers, like support for roughly 17 different cards. Right now, the number is 30. Well, it's pretty nice, almost double. And when you take into account that some of the cards are actually already long dead, you know, many are in a state that there's code, that there's actually no one with an actual card to test it, or no one actually knows if it works. It seems actually a huge number, like 30 different card drivers. But, you know, it's a pretty old project. It started in 2001, I think. And one of the problems of the many card drivers uh, has been the lack of standardization. All the card drivers implement kind of a proprietary uh, reverse engineer, something something similar, uh, common interface. But uh, for example, <coughs> the Estonian ID card, with which I worked most, was uh, one of the cards that was uh, set in stone before Packet Test 15 even existed, which means there's no relation to Packet Test 15 in that card. Uh, ESO. 71650, which is something like uh, ISO standard for the Pegasus 15. It also appeared in 2004 as a standard, but usually standards are either like documentation of existing reference implementations, or they set some kind of uh, you know industry common views to stuff that actually isn't implemented. When you take Java cards, for example, we have a Java card 3 specification for a few years already, but none of the card vendors actually implement or you know, provide you with cards that provide uh, Java R3 compatibility. We have now the European uh, citizen card. Uh, there's the PIV standard in the United States. They all like describe the common interface to a card. So that's something that should maybe limit in the next five years that we, know we won't have so many car, new card drivers because we have standards which should help it. We should have like standard drivers. Uh, during the past five years, I don't know the numbers, but several European Union member states and other countries have introduced EAD programs. Uh, they're all somewhat different, all are somewhat similar. For example, in Belgium, I think the project has been as long as five years, or from also from 2004 or five. There's Spain, Italy, Portugal, there's a new car coming in Germany, there's something in in other, in other countries as well. But anyway, that's something that was set as a, some kind of policy decision that uh, uh, by 2010, there should be interoperability, for example, for digital signatures in the European Union. We're not there yet, as we saw from the presentation by someone. Uh, in the past five years, there's been a kind of a huge standard, um, stabilization in the system APIs and standards that are used. Um, back in 2004, for example, there was when you had a pinpad reader, they existed. Even I think some of the models are still sold, but there was no real standard for using using pinpads. There was, but that standard, the CT API, is now long gone because wasn't wasn't any good. 
say, there wasn't even CCID. I don't know, again, the dates exactly, but I think it was also 2000-something, by four, when the CCID matured. Right now, all the smart grid readers you can buy anywhere, most of them are CCID. Do they support uh, extended HDU CCID oh. as well? Mm, that's, that's, that's another another issue. For example, extended HDU is, is one thing I forgot, but it's also very important in, in the context of smart cards. Uh, we have pin pass. In 2004, there was some like uh, industry consortium providing some kind of uh, specification that's now part of the PCSC ref specification, which of course is not maybe the best specification because it has no public review. It has uh, Windows guys doing it, which means you know when you have a big Indian <coughs> machine, you're screwed very often. So, but there are standards, which is really really nice. Uh, in 2004, for example, there was Mac OS X, but it didn't come with a PCSC framework. Uh, it appeared in OS X 10.4. But now it's included in the system. It's kind of the only <coughs> real viable solution for cross-platform smart card use. Well, talking about OS X, that uh, before the important client platforms were Linux and Windows, and then came OS 6, which is now, I don't know, depending on the country, from a few percent to 10 percent, something like that. It's kind of kind of important. Luckily, it's Unix, so we can use some of the tools, even though Apple screws up the open source software very often, very heavily. It's still better than Windows in some, some situations. And during the past five years, uh, things like platform plugins that uh, plug into the overall structure or overall um, services of the platform like on Windows and Mac OS X have emerged. Uh, that's something uh, that has been discussed heavily here today is the, the Tech Access 11, which is like the, the, uh, the platform API, the platform plugin for Linux, because there is no common framework. There is no such thing like Win32 API or like Crypto API on Windows or TokenD or Mac OS X that all the, so to say, native applications use. In Mac OS X you don't have, or in Linux, sorry, you don't have like native applications. You can take the fight and the GNOME or Kali, you think, but that's not the point. The point is that there is no like cryptographic platform. There is just a set of libraries you can use. Well, another thing. I noticed this uh, devaluation or, or, or maybe detailization of certificates. You know, usually five years ago, certificates were all good. You saw the padlock icon, yes, secure. But now what they say, tell you, you know, unless you see the green bar, and not just green bar, but in the special, you know, light of green, you know, be afraid, be very afraid, drop the keyboard and run away. Just something to think about. And from the smart card point of view, uh, the reason why there were so many car drivers, there are so many car drivers in OpenSC, is that uh, most of them target a specific card operating system. They target a specific common interface, proprietary, not documented, whatever. But the, uh, with, the, with, with the rise of the different interface standards like PIV and uh, ECC, uh, most, most like huge card vendors have, uh, maybe even card vendors, but uh, the, the silicon vendors offer every kind of stuff, but the application vendors have uh, settled on Java cards as the open platform, which means you can you know, have your PIV application and you can choose your vendor for the card. Again, something to think about. So, wh what could happen in five years in the world of smart cards and open source software? Uh, well, we can uh, we can try to develop the open source software just you know with uh, what do you call it ILEs without looking anywhere what's happening, but it's, it's not really a productive thing to do. So in the next five years, probably not probably, but we're going to see things that will happen inevitably. We can't we can't avoid that. The most obvious is new algorithms. Right now, when you take any kind of cryptographic software, 
what do you mean like uh, public key means RSA, like open SSA is the kind of uh, one key of the of the one side of the open source crypto wrapped software. I think it was one month ago when 5.7 version was announced to the uh, ECDCA support, uh, the curve ESA. In a few years, when you take the uh, different government or industry recommendations for new algorithms, we need to deal with it. We need to deal with elliptic curves, we need to deal with other than MD5 is long tail, other than SHA1, there would be SHA3 in five, or SHA3, yes, in five years. The recommendations for RSA keys, like 2048 bits should be the standard since I think last year already so which again from smart or technical perspective brings us to the problem of extended APDUs because the buffer to the smart card will be longer than the, the short APDU 255 byte limit you're gonna have to hide one or two more bytes somewhere so it brings again a lot of lot of trouble to the primer writers but it's uh, something application developers should really heavily think about. You know, RSA will run out of juice sometime, and we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared in our application designs, in protocols, in software stacks, and so on. And there's GOS, for example, another interesting uh, <coughs> protocol to think about. So, in the next five years, even more people will have the ID cards that were starting to roll out in the last five years. Which means that uh, even if the cards are, are out uh, at the wallets of people, they don't maybe use it. They don't maybe use them because they don't have any kind of services or software to use them with. But if more and more people will have them, more and more people will think, how can I use it? Which means there will be a much broader audience for different applications. And we need to think about it, how can we accommodate all the people? How can we make the software so usable that actually the, your grandmothers and brothers and fathers and whatever you say don't use currently <laughs> smart cars like, you know, in a corporate environment or a hacker environment, but you will have every kind of, every European citizen, most of them will have some kind of smart car they can use. And probably the government will invent ways to use it. So, Again, something we can't avoid is we can talk about Packet SS11, but the open source is kind of a broader thing than just the Linux and Linux Linux world. So open source exists, for example, OpenSC works on Windows, works on Mac OS X, and these are closed platforms, proprietary. Even though Mac OS X claims that it's open source, and for example, the, the software we use to build the native plugin for Mac OS X. It's so to say open source, but it doesn't mean it, you know, it, it works like open source. The next final release breaks everything. When you ask for support, there's no comments. When you look at code and you scratch your head and what the fuck is this again? No one to ask any kind of questions. It's not open source. And uh, native, native applications, do we like it or not, will use something that you know, works smoothly for the desktop experience. They will use Microsoft APIs. For example, the fact that the, the Starship or the flagship uh, open source browser right now, Firefox, doesn't use the crypto API in Windows, doesn't use the built-in certificate store and the built-in drivers in Windows, uh, that's kind of actually, that's a legacy. That's a, that's a very bad choice by Firefox guys. When you take the new, my favorite browser, Chrome or Chromium, it works with crypto API on Windows, very smooth experience. It works with the native APIs on Mac OS X, the best browser because software it just sucks. It does some stupid things, certificate selection, it's not really usable. Uh, one week ago or a few days ago, the Linux version of Chromium grew actual support for smart cards. You can use, it, it asked for a pin. Before it didn't use to do that, the nightly builds were flawlessly much better than Firefox with smart cards. Through Packet SS11 because there is no platform for Linux. Something we should think about. 
But what I wanted to say is that Chromium is open source and it is doing the right thing and it is doing the only thing you can do on Linux because there's no other option than DevSS 11, even though it's not the best, as I said before. So, what will also probably continue is the um, debate whether smart cards and any kind of, you know, hardware cryptography is like a three letter organization, multi million dollar investment, you know, hidden expense and so on, or it's a commodity for grandmothers, fathers, me and you, whoever. And that's the thing, you know, it's, for some of us, it's a good way to make money and say it's so complicated, it needs to be expensive, it needs to be you know, very high level, because it brings us more money. Oh, nothing here. Right. The other thing, the milk river, you know, the milk rivers, there's a saying in Estonian that there are porridge mountains and milk rivers and everything is, you know, pink and shiny and cozy. Actually, something is missing. I had a few more lines, I didn't need to invent them. Uh, first of all, that uh, due to the standards, hopefully in five years we will not see an other similar explosion of uh, car drivers in OpenSC. You will see actually that the number shrinks because you're going to have standard interfaces. We have more standards, more uh, car vendors and companies actually stick to standards on the issue of cars, performance, and so on. So we're going to have a fewer but more supported, more supported uh, smart cards. I'm sorry, actually, we'll do a switch now. So the, the perfect uh, future would be that we'll need to grow usability. This has been demonstrated over and over again that the the, uh, the user experience of any kind of uh, the usual problem of security is you have to you need to balance between the, the hardness of the security and the usability of the system. We need to grow usability somehow. Because if we want to win the, the debate, will it become a commodity or will it become or will it remain as so to say Big iron business, if you want to become a commodity, what I think everybody would like to see, you need to become usable somehow. So the usable crypto is, is basically my wet dream. Uh, and what the usability means, well, one of the these problems, which has also been discussed before, is the enrollment or the, the, the card management or the personalization or initialization. Well, if you get a card from a government, or your, pre or your company or something, you don't really care about it. But if you want to like, make crypto usable so that you can use it in your own invented environment, you want to be able to personalize your own tokens or, or use some token for your home server to you know, plug it into your wireless router and when you connect with SSH, you will actually authenticate against the hardware token in the uh, wireless browser. You need to make that somehow manageable. Diversity versus interoperability uh, versus, uh, yeah. Well, uh, the thing with Linux is that uh, the, one of the tries to make the thing uh, more uh, homogeneous, so to say, is the uh, uh, Fedora crypto consolidation, which takes the very easy road that we're gonna use NSS, we're gonna be happy, and you're gonna have like, you know, all the fine things that Windows has. Well, Linux is famous for frameworks. So, um, we want to create one again, that which is the right one, do TLS or OpenSSL or NSS or whatever. And I doubt it, but I would like to choose. I would like to choose based on my personal preference, my maybe application writer's preference, something like that. So, the diversity is nice. I don't think it should be dropped, but you need to get into a probability. So that applications written with GNU TLS could work with the same card and an application written in OpenSSL with OpenSSL in a very similar way. 
So yeah, that means accessing objects. Uh, that means like everyday use when you go to some website and need to authenticate with a key and a certificate to work. Like singularly, but you could have the option to choose something. And another thing is that uh, the what most of the SSL libraries actually do, and what Steph very brilliantly pointed out, that the, the way to distribute or, or you know, talk about trust, I put it in small tricks because it means different things. Uh, enforcing policy or, or, or like setting the trust anchors or something like that, it needs to be uh, communicated between different applications <coughs> to work, work it out. So the, the proposals, what, uh, what uh, Steph said about making packages and other usable across applications, that's something really, really great. And the tough tasks to do is integrating with proprietary platforms, maybe not really that interesting to the you know, open source developers who work on Linux, but for an open SE as a project which should bring the you know open source promise to everyone without any discrimination on the platform, this is a tough task because uh, you know for example for Micro 6 we depend on the Apple guys how they you know do their stuff when the Steve Jobs want to do a new announcement on the, on the stage. But they won't tell us anything. With Windows, um, for example, it would be nice that to have, when you plug in a card that doesn't have any kind of a vendor support, <laughs> vendor support in, a, um, yeah, in, in Windows, in Windows 7, for example, that you could load the OpenSC, the open source software. But for example, you cannot do it because Windows policy disallows open source auto discovered drivers. So again, something to think about. And another tough task to do is to actually move the open source to the other side of the, uh, the chip interface. So right now, all the software talks about uh, you know, how to make use of the card, but actually you can put the open source software into the card. And there is no solid solution for for it. There isn't a solid Java card that would right now. The muscular one, the good thing, they are all old and not really up to date anymore. Basically, that's it. So the, 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 the tough task is, is the consolidation, which is the down the easy path. You know, just say that this is our policy, which can be done in a closed project. We're going to use this, and we gain everything versus interoperability, which is difficult. <laughs> But this is something Linux has uh, this far been quite good at. For example, when you take GNOME versus Kali, there's this free desktop. That kind of assess the, uh, the, 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 the common things and the common tools and common APIs that all the, all the, all the both projects and other projects can use to gain interoperability. So looking into interoperability in, in both practical and like, theoretical ways is, is the most tough task in my opinion. That's it. Questions? I'm over my time limit. Is there a meeting somewhere to eat afterwards? Yes, uh, there is. Uh, at, actually, it's, it's nine o'clock and we're going to have like two hours to, to spend. So there are a few more places, I think three places, because uh, uh, one guy said he can come and there were two or three places before. So if anybody wants to join us for a Italian. So should we finish the discussion so I can stop recording? Yeah, Is, can stop. Are you done? Okay, thank you very much. Okay.